Income tax 2022-2023, business expenses, insurance. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Most of this information comes from the Tax Guide for Small Business for Individuals Who Use Schedule C, Publication 334, Tax Year 2022. You can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line one, income. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is, in essence, an income statement, but just an outline. Other forms, schedules flowing into these line items. One of those, the Schedule C, having business income minus business expenses the net business income from the schedule c in essence flowing in to line one income of our income tax formula the form 1040 noting that the schedule c flows into the schedule one that flows into page one form 1040 line number eight We've support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Got the Schedule C, profit or loss from business, has an income statement structure, income minus expenses. We're focused mainly on the expense side of things here, expenses related to insurance. All right, so insurance. You can generally deduct premiums you pay for the following kinds of insurance related to your business. Now, obviously, how insurance works is you're going to be safeguarding usually against some kind of future event. So clearly, you would think then the insurance would be a, a deductible business item because you're safeguarding risk related to the business. Now, when we get into other kinds of insurance, then it gets a little bit more complicated. For example, if we have the health insurance we'll discuss uh, shortly, then that's a situation where it's kind of like a personal expense, but it's also one of a, like a muddy kind of area or a gray type of area, because oftentimes when we have an employee employer situation, then the employer might be providing the insurance to the employee. And because we want a similar kind of structure on the uh, Schedule C kind of system, then we might have a situation where we can basically deduct the uh, health insurance in some instances, although it might not be on the Schedule C in that case, but rather an above the line deduction. So we'll touch on that. But generally, the types of insurance that are insurance related to the businesses we can deduct. Now, the other thing, and because they would be ordinary and necessary, they would fall into the category of ordinary and necessary. The other thing that's a little bit confusing about insurance is unlike other types of expenses, you generally prepay the insurance. You pay the insurance before you actually consume the insurance. The insurance is also a little bit more intangible most of the times, which can be a little bit confusing as well. So in other words, if we pay for, say, the telephone bill or the utility bill, usually we use the telephone, we use the utility, and then they bill us based on how much we used, and that's the billing process. For insurance, we have to plan the insurance that's going to cover some period into the future, pay for it in advance, because that's the point of insurance, and then, and then we're going to get the benefit from it in the future. That means we have this kind of prepayment type of situation that that uh, if from an accrual basis, you would think that you would have to basically allocate the cost of the, of the amount that you paid over the life of the insurance. And so you also want to you know consider the timing of when you're going to be taking the expense for the payment of the insurance. If you pay the insurance monthly, it's usually pretty close to the point in time that you got the benefit. But if you pay the insurance on a yearly basis, then you have a fairly substantial difference between when you paid it and when you got the benefit. Also note that you might think, well, I didn't get any benefit from insurance unless a tragedy happens and they repay me the insurance. But that's not exactly true because the benefit that you're getting is the insurance, the coverage. 
So the, the, the fact that you're, you're covered in the event that something happens is what we are, are getting for the insurance. Even if something bad does not happen, which we hope something bad doesn't happen, we're covered. So that means that we're consuming the insurance as the coverage period is passing, even if nothing has actually happened. All right. So you might have then fire insurance. You might have theft insurance, flood insurance, similar insurance. These kinds of insurance will be, you know, specific to the type of industry that, that we are in. Obviously, if we have a store or something like that, fire and theft, if we have uh, inventory theft is going to be more important uh, oftentimes and flood might be something specific to a particular uh, location, for example, more likely to have say flood insurance. Uh, credit insurance that covers losses from business bad debts. So now that's clearly a business type related insurance and in, in essence making credit sales and insurance on that. Three group uh, and, and that will be a specialized insurance you would think as well number two group hospitalization and medical insurance for employees including long-term care insurance so now we're saying we're schedule c business if you don't have any employees as a schedule c business then we're not talking about the the medical insurance here although you might have a medical insurance for yourself that we might deduct not on the schedule c but possibly on an above the line type of the deduction adjustment to income type of deduction this would be employees if we have employees then we might have the group hospitalization and medical insurance for them including long-term care insurance and then for uh, liability insurance that's probably the most common one for any kind of business even if you don't have inventory even if you're just uh and and you, you don't have a store or something you still might have like liability insurance as a common type of business insurance five uh, malpractice insurance that covers your personal liability for professional negligence resulting in injury or damage to uh, patients or clients that would be specific to an industry where you're dealing with patients and clients generally you would think right you would have uh, malpractice insurance possibly which would be an insurance that would be work related you would assume six workers compensation insurance set by state law that covers any claims for bodily injuries or job related diseases suffered by employees in your business regardless of fault so that's kind of a mandatory insurance oftentimes that would be workers comp and again you'd have to pay it it would be business related if you want to do business you might have to, you'd have to pay the workers comp so you would expect it would be a deductible item seven contributions to a state uh, unemployment insurance fund are deductible as taxes if they are considered taxes under state law uh, number eight so now we're forced to pay that as a business so you would think it would be an ordinary and necessary expense of doing business overhead insurance that pays uh, for business overhead expenses you have during long periods of disability caused by your injury or sickness nine car and other vehicle insurance that covers vehicles used in your business for liability damages and other losses this is another one that gets a little bit messy because the car is something that if it's a business automobile that you would expect that the costs related to it would be uh, deductible but you have the issue of is it business and personal and what's going to be the methods that you're going to be using to uh, deduct car so if you operate a vehicle partially for personal use deduct only the part of insurance premium that applies to the business use of the vehicle if you use the standard mileage rate to figure your car expenses you cannot deduct any car insurance premiums so we talked about the car in the past R remember the thought process is the standard mileage method is usually going to be easier uh, to calculate than the actual uh, mileage method and you have to kind of think about which one to use when you put first put the car uh in place and so on and so forth so you can check that one out if you want to go into more detail with that 10 life insurance covering your employees if you are not directly or indirectly the beneficiary under the contract so now you have the life insurance usually life insurance is set up so now you're you're providing life insurance possibly for you know the employees and so because it's employee employee benefit possibly then it being deductible on the schedule c usually the life insurance beneficiary will be the family of the person of the employee in that case not yourself right if it was yourself that would be a weird kind of situation where uh it may it may change things up a bit here 11 
business interruption insurance uh, that pays for lost profits if your business is shut down due to a fire or other cause. So you might buy insurance. You might say, hey, look, I need my income. If there's a break in the income due to these items, it would be catastrophic. My business would go under. So maybe you, you set up an insurance in, in the event that, that that kind of problem happens to get you through that gap point would be the idea. And if it's business insurance, you would think it would be ordinary and necessary. So non-deductible premiums. You cannot deduct premiums on the following kinds of insurance. One, self-insured uh, reserve funds. You cannot deduct amounts credited to a reserve set up for self-insurance. This applies even if you, if you cannot get business insurance coverage for certain business risks. So in other words, you might think, you know, I, I can't afford whatever kind of insurance, liability insurance or whatever insurance. And so I'm just going to put some money away as my insurance fund. I'm not going to touch it unless there's an issue in which case I'll dip into it. So I'm kind of self-insuring myself. That might not be a bad strategy to take to do that sometimes, although some of the some of the types of insurance that comes up like fire insurance or something is usually because the event is so big and catastrophic that it would be very difficult to self-insure if you if you can self-insure against minor events like like whatever happens that makes it so i can't work for a couple that would be like a like a savings fund or an emergency fund basically which is kind of like a self-insurance type of thing uh, you can do that but you can't just deduct the fact that you're holding money into in an account because you're saying i'm not going to touch it for uh insurance right it's my insurance fund i'm not going to touch it well you still have the money you could touch it it's not like insurance really so however uh your actual losses may be deductible so when you when there's a problem and then you spend the money <laughs> for the losses or when the losses happen then that would be deductible so for more information see publication 5472 a loss of earnings. You cannot deduct premiums for a policy that pays you for your lost earnings due to sickness or disability. However, see item eight in the previous list. Okay, so three, certain uh, certain life insurance and annuities. A, for contracts, is, so now we've got the life insurance and annuities, which you know often are part tied together with the life insurance companies all the time. So A, your contracts issued before June 9, 1997, you cannot deduct the premiums on a life insurance policy covering you, an employee, or any person with a financial interest in your business if you are directly or indirectly a beneficiary, that's key point, of the policy. So you are, uh, you are included among possible beneficiaries of the policy if the policy owner is obligated to repay a loan from you using the proceeds of the policy. So that would be someone trying to work around this thing with saying it's a loan situation. So a person has a financial interest in your business if the person is an owner or part owner of the business or has lent money to the business. All right, B. For contracts issued after June 8th, 1997, you generally cannot deduct the premiums on any life insurance policy, endowment contract, or annuity contract if you are directly or indirectly a beneficiary. The disallowance applies without regard to whom the policy covers. Four, uh, insurance, uh, insurance to secure a loan. If you take out a policy on your life, or on the life of another person with a financial interest in your business to get or protect a business loan, you cannot, so now they're gonna use it, you know, as collateral kind of, right? So you cannot deduct the premiums as a business expense, nor can you deduct the premium as interest or business loans or as an expense of financing loans. In the event of death, the proceeds of the policy are not taxed as income, even if they are used to liquidate the debt. All right, self-employed health insurance deduction. You may be able to deduct uh, the amount you paid for medical and dental insurance and qualified long-term care insurance for you and your family. So this is the weird, this is kind of the weird one that comes into play here because usually you would think most of those other insurance things were business related. They're insurance for my employees or they're insurance for liability insurance. So you would think they'd be ordinary and necessary and therefore uh, deductible, although you still have that question of, of the timing of when you're gonna basically deduct them on the accounting methods that are gonna be used and whatnot. But you're, you're gonna say, okay, that, that makes sense. But 
with, when you're dealing with an employee, like a, a, a lot of these laws that you can kind of make sense of them by looking at the structure of a corporation. So in a corporation, you've got, and you deal the, with the interplay between the employees and the employers. Because remember, remember that we are not an employee of our Schedule C business and that we don't issue ourselves a W-2. However, we're still treated as an employee of the business in that we're paying the self-employment tax. And some of the other kind of relation in, in the form of self-employment taxes, kind of similar payroll taxes. So, so other kind of situations come up when they pass laws that have an impact on an employee employer situation, which is typically focused on corporations that have a similar kind of impact when you're saying, Hey, what about me? Little guy over here at the skid, this, the sole proprietorship, I should get some kind of benefit related to that as well. Shouldn't I? I mean, because I'm a sole proprietor and you're treating me in essence as an employee of my own business. So in a C corporation, for example, you would think that the, the, as we, saw that the that the uh health insurance might be a deductible item for the employee that we saw on the even on the schedule c but you can see it on a, on a c corporation employee employer situation as well so you might think hey i'm kind of being treated as as an employee shouldn't i get a similar kind of benefit and that's why even though the health insurance is kind of a personal as opposed to a business expense, you would think it would be a legitimate kind of expense. Okay, so how to figure the deduction. Generally, you can use the worksheet in the instructions for form 1040 to figure your deduction. However, if any of the following apply, you must use the worksheet in chapter six of publication 535. So you have more than one source of income subject to self-employment tax. That's gonna complicate things. You file form 2555 relating to foreign earned income. Uh, you are using amounts paid for qualified long-term care insurance to figure the deduction. So you can also see publication 8962 and its separate instructions uh, and publication uh, 974 if the insurance plan established or considered to be established under your business was obtained through health insurance marketplace. So that also complicates health insurance market and you are claiming the premium tax credit. So you can dive into that in more detail. The general idea would be if I have my personal uh, in insurance, then uh, I may not be able to deduct that on the Schedule C, but it might be an above the line deduction, uh, 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 deduction from income uh, type of deduction. And the questions then would be, well, do I have access to insurance other than my Schedule C business? Uh, did, I, did I have the capacity to get insurance through say an employer or a spouse's employer, which can kind of complicate the situation because you can see from the IRS's perspective, they would kind of like an employee employer situation is what they usually, so that's what, and so you would think that it could complicate things if you had access to an insurance through the employee uh, employer relationship from yourself or your spouse, if you had a W-2 wages in some kind, in addition to your schedule C type of business. Now the health insurance marketplace kind of muddies things up. You you might know that as like Obamacare, right? So and so what happened with that whole situation is you had the two two people going in different directions for the argument. One one group was arguing that we need to have a single payer system that's basically more centralized and and standardized and whatnot, and that would that would also reduce the free rider problem because they would force everybody to have insurance for health insurance like they do with the car insurance. And the other side was saying, no, you can't force people to buy insurance. And if, if we centralize everything, you're gonna make the whole health insurance worse. The whole reason that we're the best, we have some of the best stuff is because of competition. So you should, to lower prices, you should increase the competition and and open open more types of insurance and allow companies regulate them but allow companies in and allow states to have you know different different policies and whatnot so they they ended up obviously squished in the middle here so now they they can't they don't generally mandate the health insurance because i believe that was kind of struck down as as unconstitutional and but they still have this credit for the health insurance marketplace type of thing 
and that kind of muddies up the system. So if you get a, if you get a, because if you get a, if your income is below a certain threshold, you might be able to get this credit, which basically lowers the premiums that you're paying into the health insurance marketplace. So you're kind of getting a prepayment of the credit, which is going to complicate the amount of, of money that you paid for the insurance policy, which is going to complicate how much you could deduct for the insurance policy. So if you're in that situation, you can dive into these publications for more detail on it.